who won the debate and where is all the outrage on all the stuff that the Biden family has done, including the vice president. What's up, everybody? Welcome aboard. It is Bubba's Bottom Line for Sunday, the 25th of October, and we're flying along. Pretty soon it'll be daylight savings time, it'll be Christmas, and we'll be in the next year. What is going on? So we had the big debate. Uh, I would say to give a slight edge to Trump in this debate. Now, I'm not going to make any clear winner, but I think that you give a slight edge to Trump, because he is debating not only the moderator, but the other the other candidates. So we'll see. Again, we'll see how the American people vote in about eight days. You know, that's what it's going to come down to right now on the on the betting lines. Uh, of course, Trump is still a a big underdog. Uh, he's been anywhere from a he actually was the favorite at one time to a, a small underdog. Then he was like a big underdog. And now he's coming back towards the mean which makes sense because typically elections are not that far apart either way. In the meantime, of course, we have the a lot of the loud mouths are, are mouthing off. But where is the outrage on Hunter Biden? You know, if that was Donald Trump Jr. or Eric Trump that, or Ivanka, that would be, oh, my God, there'd be a major crisis. The whole world would stop. OK, but of course, it's not. So we tend to overlook all the warts and flaws of the other candidate because, of course, he's on the left. Now, I still don't understand why we have such a left-right debate when we should be more down the center. And we are Americans first, not Democrats or Republicans. In fact, I'm neither. I'm really a libertarian, but certainly I cannot vote on the left side. I am not willing to give up any more of my paycheck, okay, for more taxes. I'm sorry, but hey, if you want to, God bless you, write a check. But it, it, they ain't getting it from me, okay? So that's all I can say regarding that. But we'll see. Look, <clears throat> I mean, I don't know that he's, he could, I don't think he could do a good job, Biden. 47 years, he hasn't done anything. But suddenly, magically, he has got some cures for the ills. Now, again, I just ask you, with reasonable logic, okay, where were these cures when he was the vice president for eight years? Where were all these cures when he was in the Senate for 47 years? I mean, please help me understand where are the cures that he could give us today? And, and why do we think they can magically show up? Okay. I think that that's a problem. And, I, and I, again, you can make all the cases you want. You can tell me how much you don't like Donald Trump. Listen. We know one thing for sure. Nobody, the Republicans don't like Trump and the Democrats don't like Trump. However, he is the one party. He is the one person who has taken away a lot of the graft. He is the one person who made deals that were better for the United States of America. He did stop a lot of the free money train of politicians and lobbyists that were stealing our money. Now, do you really want to sell out to China? Do you really want them to be the world's power? Because, again, the way in the direction that we're headed, that is where we're headed to. Now, you can say whatever you wish, but at the end of the day, if we give up everything and let everybody in and, and, and don't, don't have any restrictions, there's going to be a lot more problems to face than the ones we're watching right now. Now, we've already got the beginning of potentially a civil war brewing. I mean, again, you think that these little state problems are not a problem. They're a problem. But, of course, those that are truly on the left keep saying that there's no violence happening. In the meantime, amazingly, the looting and the killing and the shooting and the burning. So, I don't know. Maybe maybe I can't see. Maybe I don't understand what I'm watching, but that's what I see. I mean, you know, and, of course, you know, you'll never hear a bad word about the Biden family because he's running for president. You know, of course, Trump has been under constant pressure for four years now. And of course, he'll be under pressure for another four years because for some reason, we don't want to make the country work. We'd rather spend our time and resources trying to get him out of office. So if, you, if obviously, if you just done what you were supposed to and waited, you could have voted him out. But we'll see. In the meantime, 
Uh, they want Biden to turn over all this bank records. Let's see what happens here, Mr. Full Disclosure. I mean, Mr. I earned $6 million between me and my wife over the last 50 years, but yet we have $40 million. Amazingly, I mean, that's a, that's a nice little chunk, chunk of change considering. But, you know, hey, it, it all, let's see if he turns his bank records over. I doubt you'll ever see him. I, I'm sure the only way you'll see him is if President Trump gets reelected. The only way you'll see all these crooks on both parties, not just one. Again, they're they're all, they got, all got a lot of skeletons in their closet, no matter what party you vote for. Okay. But I think many of them will be going to jail should we see a the president reelected, which would nothing would make me happier than to clean out the closet of all the filth and dirt. But again, many like the deep state and like the crap that goes on. So, hey, more power to you. Again, I say the same thing as I say all the time. Whoever you vote for, just vote. Okay, go out and vote. I voted the other day. Line was around the building. I had to go back, but I voted. And and again, go out and vote. I don't care who you vote for. How's that? Just go vote. Exercise your right. Let's see if we can get over the 61% that we got last time. Okay. So, you know, it looks like, I mean, the they're telling us the coronavirus. There's more, The worst is yes to come. I don't know. Again, uh, fortunately, and personally for me, it has not had a dramatic effect on me personally, either health-wise and my family uh, or business-wise. I mean, I have not really felt the, the individual effects. Many have, and I know it's been a tragedy. Uh, but I do believe that many of the numbers are being misreported as well. And, and I, I don't know what's worse is the shutdowns and destroying small businesses or the um, or the suicides and 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 the people that die from being shut down. So again, I don't I don't really know the metrics there. I know that yes, the case count is continuing to go higher, but I also know the death count is continuing to go lower. So again, look, I'm not I am not saying one way or the other. I am saying though that the country and the economy should be open. Okay, I believe that as we are Americans, we should have the right to choose whether we want to be locked down or whether we want to go out and to go about our business. Now, again, I'm a big believer in the in the social distancing, and I'm a big believer in wearing the mask. I mean, I, I follow the rules wherever I go, and when I'm a lot out, you know, we're still in Illinois. We got a lot of crazy restrictions, and, and the goofy mayor, oh, you, my God, is she going to make this a, a tragedy? I mean, another great city down to the toilet, New York and Chicago, well, can you flush them both down into ghost towns? But certainly, nobody complains about the rioters out there and the gathering of the gangs, okay? But they do complain about businesses being open. Now, you tell me the logic behind that. When it's acceptable to have protesting, rioting, and big groups together, but yet people just to go out and about their business, not no good. Small businesses can't open because, God forbid, they should try to make a living. I mean, but let's let Walmart and Target and Walgreens be open, but let's make sure that we screw every little retailer, okay? Again, these are just things that are not logical in my playbook. I don't, I don't, I can't comprehend the destruction that comes with what they're doing. And again, they want to do it again. And I assure you that if, if, uh, if Biden wins, okay, the whole country will be shut down, okay? So you want to talk about devastation. Just wait. It, it, it's a comment. If, if he wins, I, again, I still don't believe he's going to win. But if he does, I think you see a shutdown everywhere. I think it's, you know, quarantine, ban, oh, you name it. it. You'll be locked in your house forever. I, we'll see. But we'll see how it all works out. You know, of course, we continue to hear about stimulus packages. Look, I don't want to give any more stimulus packages. I want people to go back to work. OK, if you truly are under risk of health and you cannot work, I have no problem. I'm happy to donate. I'm happy to fund those that legitimately cannot go to work. I have no problem with helping those that cannot help themselves. Certainly, I wouldn't want my mother out running around, okay, or somebody who had pulmonary disease or somebody who had issues. But if you're a normal, healthy person, you have the right to make the decision. I have no problem. And I believe that people would rather go run their businesses than sit home and wait for a stimulus check, which is probably not going to come. Okay. So, Look, I, I, I think that there's just issues that have to be resolved. And the first is, is a consistent message. And that's one thing we do not get 
Okay. Because, you know, the hospitals report one way because they get more money to have COVID deaths. Okay. Uh, and then the, and then the rest of what we, we've talked about is just right down political lines. So, Hey, it is what it is, but there's a, you know, there's a big story out, you know, Iowa never locked down and they're still struggling. Well, of course they're still struggling. You know, look, one state that doesn't lock down, two states that don't lock down, do not solve the problem. You know, they're farmers. Okay. That's, you know, if you can't sell your crops, if people aren't going out, okay, to consume more food, if they're not going out to restaurants, if they're not going out and doing things and consuming, well, then your business is worthless whether you're open or not. Okay. They still got to maintain it. They still got to take care of business and harvest and do all they're doing. But if, if you have no business, then it doesn't matter. But that's because everything is shut down. So I can't use that as, as a, a legitimate example as to why there's problems in the economy. Because again, they cannot sell their, it's like a restaurant. Okay. They never shut, but you won't let anybody out of the house. So it's a difference. Okay. You know, I, I think we, destroy the world's greatest economy okay and we're just now coming back again and if, and if we shut down again you know again as they say god help us okay i mean i think the next time it will be so devastating okay that there'll be a lot of problems but but again i'm i, I will support whoever wins okay you know one thing about me i've got my opinion but whoever wins the election i will support i won't be happy if i have to support the other guy but i'm not look i'm an american first I want this country to thrive. I want it for my kids. I don't, guys, I'm old. I don't have that much time left. Okay. But I want my kids and my, my family's legacy to live on in a free America, not the direction that we're headed at this moment. So, uh, but of course, you know, we're seeing, uh, you know, that, uh, that some of the ballots have come in, no signature, no postmark, no nothing yet. Oh, the ballot's okay. Okay. I assure you that the ballot has Biden's name on it. It's fine. And if it has Trump's name, it goes in the garbage can. You, you can bet, you can bet. It, okay. This is going to be very interesting to see. But again, it really won't, shouldn't matter all that much because I believe the key states are voting in person. And of course, we know it comes down to the electoral vote, not to the popular vote. So and I do think, I do think you will see many more African Americans voting for President Trump this time because they know that they've been taken advantage of for years. And I think you'll see many more Jewish Americans, okay, vote for Trump because they understand some of the things that are going on and what he has done for Israel in general. Okay. Now typically, you know, they're naturally left, but they I think you might see some crossover. So we can hear all the stories that they're it's not going to happen. Okay. But at the end of the day, we'll see. Okay, that that we, we, we won't know, okay, for now, but we do know what we can see today. And today the polls have got Vice President Biden in the lead, uh, Hunter Biden under a scandal, all these things going on, but yet you hear crickets when it comes to the problem. Whereas, of course, if it was anybody with the name Trump or relationship to, it would be blasted 24 hours a day, never stop within the media. In the meantime, hey, it, it is what it is, and we'll just we'll go on. We'll exist. In the meantime, this is Bubba's Bottom Line. It is Sunday, uh, October the 25th. We're going to step out here for a break, and we'll be right back with my market commentary after these messages. Bubba's Bottom Line. We'll be right back. What's up, all? Well, you know, yesterday I did a great hedging webinar. I mean, you know, we're getting close, right? Uh, again, first of all, markets are nuts to begin with. They've been totally volatile and whatever. In the meantime, I did a great hedging webinar. If you want to see a copy of it, it's the last class until next year, till March. Okay. So if you're interested in hedging and you want to see it, I urge you to email me, get a copy. Tuesday night is class number one. Okay. And of course, our, our, our partnership with Family Farms, exciting. Uh, getting ready, to, trying to schedule a trip right now for Iowa, Kansas, and Nebraska, probably right in the, in the next two weeks now. We're, get, we're, we're, we're getting close. We talked about it. So that's going to be exciting. And of course, as you know, I have other brokerage accounts, but the two brokers that I recommend for the products I use, okay, and I use myself, right? Everything I, everything that I recommend, I'm also trading myself. But for futures and commodities, there's nobody like the CTG group, okay? Again, Nell and Pat over there, they do a great job. They got great customer service, okay? They're the only authorized letter of direction trader for us, okay? Why? Because they take care of business, it gets done timely, okay, and boom, 
they handle it. And if you got a question, they pick up the phone. That's all I can ask for. And the same thing goes for Tradier. Okay. I mean, Tradier is such a great operation, number one. Number two, it's $10 a month. Okay. Again, I, I have to keep going back to it's $10 a month. Okay. So, you know, for those who want to put some money away, you know, and pay $10 instead of whatever you're paying, okay, you might want to do that. And plus the fact that we're in phase three of the fi- and the final phase of our automation to get all of our products totally automated via uh, computer. If you choose, you don't have to. You can certainly either look at the software and use and just make the trade yourself wherever you're brokering at, or you can have it audit, totally automated through Trader. That'll be up to you. Okay. Again, we don't, I don't care where we go. I, I have no allegiance. I, I just tell you where I think the best value is because at the end of the day, I'm looking out for your value. That's, it, it's about money. Okay. So anyways, it's trade your brokerage, actually and options. They do such a good job and they get great customer service and they're on top of their business. So they're great. And of course, our commodity report, Andy Hecht, what can I say? It's a great report. Everybody who's seen it loves it. And of course, right now it's a hundred dollars a month or $800 a year, but it's going to go up significantly because we're going to add some algorithm stuff to it and we're going to add some specific trades to it. So it'll be not only the complete fundamental side, it'll have the technical, we'll have the trades that we want to use in it, including the ETFs and the futures and commodities. So again, you want to check it out. That's Andy Heck. And of course, you can see who he is on Go Seeking Alpha. He's the number one author there. And our high school program, you know, again, we're trying to get it all rebuilt. It's been a, a challenge. Uh, but we're just about through. But that's at Patreon, P A T R O N dot com forward slash Bubba Trading. That's Patreon dot com forward slash Bubba Trading. Now let's get back to Bubba's Bottom Line. Welcome back, everybody. It is Bubba's Bottom Line. It is Sunday. It is October the 25th, and we're rolling along. And here we are in markets that are as painful and as torturous as you can one can ask. Okay. When 90% of the markets you trade are doing nothing but consolidating, it is as pissy and crappy as you can possibly get. I don't know what other words is. I'm sorry, but it is just such a tormenting type of trade because they never break far enough to go anywhere. And it's always up, good, bad, good, bad. In the meantime, that is the pattern. And what does that mean? Well, what it means in simple terms is that it's just consolidating, which is a part of the phase of the market. Um, but interesting, this time we're consolidating and volatility is rising at the same time, which is only telling us a couple of things. There's going to be a real big move coming. Now, I don't know which way it is. Right now, I'm going to say long. Remember a couple of weeks ago when we were short, I said short. Well, now I'm going to say long, but I don't really know. I mean, I'm, I'm giving you a guess based on what my positions are right now. Okay, But there's a gigantic move coming. Only And the only reason I can say that is because the way patterns build, they're compressing with a shot that they're not, they're going, the next big move they make, I say I say we're not 15, 20% in either direction. Again, it could be up. I'm not saying, I'm not saying that, it, I'm sorry, I got to push back here. I'm not saying it can't be up. It could be either way. Again, our down, I, we'll see. I don't know. Okay. But so at the end, they're consolidating. We remain long across the board. Okay. Dow, Russell, uh, S&P, uh, NASDAQ. Okay. So, in the meantime, we're long. We're going to stay there. Metals are in the opposite pattern. They're in a downtrend. But again, they are in that same torment of a consolidation pattern as well, which, again, is, we're short. We're short across the board. Uh, and last week, they were all slightly higher marginally. But each big rally failed exactly where it should have and support held. Eventually, it will break out of this even tighter range it's starting to make now. And when it does, again, I believe it'll be down for now. But you know, remember, I am not, I don't commit myself to anything. I'm trading these. If you want to ask, so I'm doing long term, which I always give you a full disclosure as well. I am long equities always. I'm hedged, but I'm always long equities. And I always own physical gold and physical silver. So again, my long term is long everything, okay, with a hedge. And my short term is I'm trading. So right now we're short. We could be long anytime, but right now we're stay short. It looks like the bond markets have, and the notes have finally broken to the downside. Now, we'll see if we can get some follow-up this week, but we, we're seeing signs of a breakdown, okay, which is a good thing because we're short on both notes and bonds. Uh, and they are looks like they are breaking to the downside of the pattern, which would be marvelous when you're, and that, when you're on the right side. It's a great to be trending right in your favor. 
uh, copper. We're long, and of course, it continues to break out. It looks like that might be very close, but it could be breaking out here. Uh, net gas, we're short, or excuse me, we're long natural gas. Uh, last thing was low, you know, last thing is interesting. November was higher, December was lower, which we're long December. Uh, and today, look, I'm, I'd rather be long it at this time of year than short it. Okay. If I, when I have to reverse, if I do, I will. But, you know, I always know the dangers this time of year because, you know, they burn off all the extra and then you get this major cold snap and then there's a demand oh, and you can't keep up with it. I mean, it happens every few years. It's kind of like a weather event in the grain markets. But in the meantime, right now we're long it. It's, it's a little bit lower. Um, oil, you know, we got close to breaking to the downside, but, you know, we had some big up moves that failed. Then we had a big down move that didn't break down. So, again, we're still long, and it's still just, again, it's just, I mean, 39 to 42 December oil. You want to look at the chart, okay? Uh, and the dollar, we're, we're still short dollars, and they're down. But they they really are just repeating what they did when we were long. When they got came all the way back, you know, they're, they're, they're churning in a range, okay? And the range is, you know, wide enough to make it pissed off. Now, the good thing is, is that our algorithms don't change that fast. We, I, we understand how markets work. We understand that trying to be overly active when you're trying to get the trend is, is a fool's game because at the end of the day, you'll get chopped up because they're, they're wide, it's wide sweeping consolidation. So there's no reason to get involved, period. Let the markets trade. And when it finally breaks out, then we'll be ready to go either, either direction. Right now, obviously, it'd be easiest for it to break to the upside. But we'll see. We don't know. I mean, gold would be obviously the downside. Metals, oil would be the upside. But you just look at the pictures. And again, that's what your your your, your views of markets should be price action first, second, third, and nothing else. News is a losing proposition. I'm, I will guarantee you, if you try to trade the news, you will lose. And interesting enough, yesterday... I mean, Friday, excuse me, Friday, you know, the grains were doing fine. They were kind of, you know, chipping around back and forth. They'd hope they were higher overnight Thursday and they came back down. And then Friday they were churning back and forth and, and corn was always fairly strong. Wheat was up and down, but it's a little stronger. And beans were weak. And when I went to look at the close, because okay, I don't, you know, I don't watch all the line. You know, it's not that big a deal. Suddenly they were all spiking higher. There must've been a report yesterday. Again, I don't, pay attention to news. I, I, we're along. I mean, so I expected to move higher. And of course, they are trending. They are the one market that has been in a solid uptrend for quite a while now. So beans, corn, and wheat across the board. We're long. And of course, in the meats, we're short across the board. We just got short hogs, uh, but cattle looks awful. But of course, you know what I'm going to say here, right? I, I, I want to buy cattle so bad. Okay. I want to buy that steak. I want to buy the feeder so bad. I can taste it. But I got to wait. I got to be patient to wait. But these are getting the levels that there's certain prices, especially in commodities. There's an old saying high prices will cure high prices, low prices will cure low prices. And there's always, you know, of course, we, markets always go too far one way or the other, no matter what market. And here, I think it's getting a little bit overdone to the downside. And again, we're not going to jump early. We're going to be patient enough to wait. But at the end of the day, okay. I'm saying that I would I would love to be long here and not short, but I think that we'll see, you know, if we can get the economy rolling, if we can get things going, because you're seeing still the housing bubbles, you're still seeing all this purchasing power. So I'm hoping that we can get things open, then obviously the demand will come back for grains and meats and we'll start to see some more action. Right? In the meantime, the softs that we're in, I don't I don't look at those as closely. I just give you our positions. Okay. Uh, cotton. We are long. Uh, OJ, we are short. Coffee, we are short. Sugar, we are long. Cocoa, we are short. Those are our positions. That's where I stand right now. And of course, every day I give you a little update at the end, so I'll let you know if they change. Until then, again, I don't watch them that often. You know, I look at them maybe once a day. So, but I do want to give you updates and somebody had to ask for them. And, you know, there's a question going around, you know, is, is, is there a chance? that we go back to a new gold standard, okay? You know, again, we had the gold standard originally, then the Fed got involved a little bit, and then we had, you know, Nixon. You know, we had, we had 1945, they made a change, and then we had Nixon, who uh, went to pure paper, which was a disaster. You know, I don't know that we can ever go to a solid gold standard. I'd love to, 
I would appreciate it. I don't think it can ever happen because I don't think that the Fed and the government, even though the Fed is private, will give up the power okay, of printing. You know, if you're if you're if you're if you're against another another item that it helps benchmark the price, it's not so easy just to print away. And I think that's why I think you'll see digital, which will be a disaster. But I think you'll see digital. I don't think that. But I hope I'm wrong. That would be a that would be great. Okay, to have actually something backing paper money instead of the the BS banks and governments because they're worthless. Okay, that they're they're the Fed, central banks around the world. Countries, governments, they're all worthless. All they'll do is figure out how to piss your money away. In the meantime, this is Bubba's Bottom Line. It is Todd Bubba Orbit. We're going to step out of a break and we'll be back with my commentary right after the break. Well, kids, yesterday I did a nice webinar on hedging. If you'd like to get a copy of that recording, please email me at bob at bubbatrading.com. Tuesday nights, the last, it's going to be the last class going until at least March, unless I stop doing them all together, which is a chance. And of course, partnership with family farms. They're great people. They do a good job. And of course, we are uh, doing, we're going on a trip uh, and go see a bunch of people, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we're scheduling it, just putting a few, few less finishing details on it, but it should be the second week of November. Uh, but uh, Kansas, Iowa, and Nebraska, if you'd like to be invited, make sure you let me know at bubbatrading.com. And our commodity report, Andy Hecht, uh, as I say all the time, A, he's very bright. He's a genius. Uh, he's a great writer. He's got great information, but he's got physical experience, which is what really makes him dynamic. I mean, he's traded, he still trades all stuff, but he had traded all physical. He ran it for Solomon Brothers and some of the other places that traded commodities. And in fact, the one time he was the biggest silver trader in the world. In the meantime, if you'd like uh, you know, to check it out, you go to you know, bubbatrading.com. It's called Technomental. Right now, it's $100 a week, a month, or $800 a year. But it's going up because we're going to actually, on the 7th of November, we're doing a webinar together and we're going to present and add some new things to it. And of course, our brokerage partners are second to none. You know, again, I have other brokerage accounts, but for futures, commodities, CTG, nothing like it. They do, they're the only one authorized to do my letter of direction trading, number one. But number two, they do a great job. They execute on time. It's the same time every day if there's an order. But if you call them, you have problems or you need to get set up. They're on the phone with you, bang. So again, how can I ask for better than that? Great customer service. And of course, traders the same way with their program and their traders, 10 bucks. Now think about it. I don't know who's paying 10 bucks, but I traded, you know, thousands, 30 to 34,000 contracts this month and paid $10 for commission. Eh, not bad. I could handle that instead of what I would have had to pay elsewhere. So again, it's up to you. But they also, we also have their API and we've automated. We're almost done in the final phase and we'll be under, we'll be 100% automated for those who want it by the end of the year. Okay. And of course, our high school program at Patreon, P A T R O N dot com forward slash Bubba Trading. It's Patreon dot com forward slash Bubba Trading. And let's get back to my commentary and of course, the football pick too. Welcome back. This is Bubba's Bottom Line. It is Todd Bubba Orwitz on Sunday. October the 25th, and of course, as always, I give you some commentary, and and I'll tell you what bothers me, okay, I'll tell you what really bothers me, and it's not to do with politics, okay, Uh, you know, it really bothers me, I start reading, you know, I don't read much, you know, I've I've never read the Wall Street Journal, okay, I've never watched Dead Barons, I never really watch news on TV unless I'm going to be on, but what's starting to bother me is I'm starting to see a lot of these ads creep up, you know, silver's going to explode, you know, they're all trying to sell something. Okay. Gold's going to a billion. Silver's going to explode. Make 3,333% here. To me, that's brutal. It's terrible. Again, I'm not saying that silver is not going to explode. I don't have any idea. I, I, I hope it explodes. I own it. I mean, yeah, I'm short of the future, but I get long nose and I own physical. So I'm, I'll be happy if it explodes. But again, nobody, but nobody can time the market as to when it's going to go higher or when it's going to go lower. All we use as an algorithm and price action. So please, I'm begging you, especially those that are even maybe a little more challenged financially right now and you're looking for that answer out. The answer out is not some of this phony crap that is advertised out there, okay? The, your, your out is not thinking that gold's going to 5,000 tomorrow, okay? It'd be a, gold could certainly go to 5,000. I expect it to get there someday, but it ain't gonna be tomorrow and it ain't gonna be in the next year. That I can almost guarantee, okay? Remember, Everything trades a level at a time. 
Okay. Nobody, but nobody can predict. Even the insiders don't know what the hell is going to go on because it comes back down to the simple thing of price action that is dealt with in the markets. So don't get swindled or handled. And even even the bull, the gold, the bugs, the gold bugs and the silver bugs. If I believe, I believe, I own. I tell you that everybody should have some representation of gold and silver. And just because I'm short it now doesn't mean that I don't think it's going higher. I keep buying it. I keep buying physical. I'm just saying to you that do yourself a favor and use your due diligence to make sure that you're not getting swindled because most of those things are driven to create false hope and to reach into your pocket for a fee. Okay, that's the bottom line. And and that's always my concern for people that are in the business. Again, whether you remember mine or not, I don't care. I want you to be protected. I want you to be safe. And the last thing I want you to do is get taken to the cleaners. So that's my that's my commentary for today. In the meantime, we do have football tonight. Uh, a uh, I had to switch a game because they were worried that the Raiders might be, uh, you know, I guess the, all, the whole offensive line of the Raiders has got COVID or on COVID protocol. So they were worried they might not have a game. You got to have a prime time game. So the game was switched to uh, Arizona and Seattle. And we happen to like that game. Uh, we actually like the dog here, Arizona. Listen, Russell Williams is great. There's, there's nobody better, right? He's a phenomenal. Okay. And Seattle's a better team, most likely. But I think at home, in this spot, I think it fits Arizona. I'm going to make a, a reasonable play on the game itself, plus three and a half. I'm going to make a small play on the money line and take, I think it's 160, plus 160 or 150 uh, on the money line straight up. In the meantime, have a great weekend, everybody. Be safe, be healthy. We'll see you back. Well, we'll see you tomorrow with the daily update. But of course, we'll see you back, back next Sunday, right before the election. Uh, as we have Bubba's Bottom Line and see you next week. And that will be, I believe, the first Sunday in November, November 1st. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow with the Bubba's Day Update. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bubba's Bottom Line, we'll see you later.